Team USA is in the gold medal game. Not a surprise. We all knew this was going to happen. Never in doubt. <laughs> well, it was definitely in doubt when they were down by 17. In fact, entering the fourth quarter against Serbia on Thursday afternoon, they only had a 30% chance to win the game straight up, but they found a way to do it. They're now taking on France, a little bit of an underdog story as well. The home team, France, a live home dog. Uh, the USA finally bounced back and play a solid game here. I've got an opinion on this one for you, both side, total, also some player props, deep analysis, free plays for the men's basketball gold medal Olympic game Saturday afternoon coming up free in this video in just a moment. Hi, this is Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com, right back here on Wager Talk TV. And if you're joining us, by the way, overnight on Friday, early Saturday morning, check out my bronze medal preview between Serbia and Germany. But this is the later game at 3.30 Eastern Saturday afternoon, the gold medal matchup. USA and France. USA, 16-point favorite. They were a 15.5-point favorite against Serbia. We know how that turned out. Never came close to covering. But if you recall, in my preview video on Thursday for that semifinal game, I said I thought the USA might start a bit sluggish. And that was an understatement. Boy, did they start sluggish. In fact, they were losing the majority of the game. In fact, you could get them as low as minus 2.5 in the second half. And as I mentioned, going into the start of the fourth quarter, they were actually a plus point spread underdog. Uh, in fact, they were almost plus 200 on the money line at that point, a 30% chance they would pull out the straight-up win, let alone cover. Well, they ended up covering the two and a half, some of the in-game lines. Depends on when you played it, if you got it cheap enough. But I think things will be different here against France. As we've seen with the USA, they turn it on, they turn it off, but when they need to turn it on, they can get it done. Whether it's barely beating South Sudan in the exhibition game or giving up a 19-point halftime lead in low and South Sudan to outscore them in the second half of the rematch. Puerto Rico coming out strong in the first half, and then the U.S. blew them out in the second half. And if you recall, the first elimination game against Brazil earlier this week, the video I did for that game on Tuesday, I mentioned the fact they started slow against Puerto Rico. I thought they would be a strong first-half play against Brazil, and they were. And then I came right back and said I'd be very cautious with the U.S. early on against Serbia, and they came out flat. If this zigzag tendency continues, the USA should come out strong here in the first half of the gold medal game. So I like the U.S. minus 16. Yes, it's a hefty price and there are concerns. But the first half is 9, 9.5, which is in line with what has been in other games in this price range. So I would probably split the play. If you're going to play Team USA, which would be my lean, um, first half and full game, maybe a half unit each, I'd probably defer, prefer the first half because I do think they come out strong. But I also don't think they take their foot off the gas in this game. Being the gold medal game, I think they play from start to finish. It's also their last game. No reason to keep anything in the tank. And if the lead gets big, which I think it might, double digits fairly early on, Steve Kerr will probably look to get some other guys in that didn't play as much in the last game. Keep in mind, uh, Tatum once again played no minutes against Serbia, just like he did in the first game of the Olympics. And um, Halliburton, who's seen very few minutes, did not play at all. I don't think Kerr is going to mess around. He's going to say keep the same guys that did well in the comeback against Serbia. And that was the starting lineup of James, Embiid, Booker, Holiday, and Curry. And boy, was Curry a monster. You know, I mentioned in the video that I was thinking maybe he'll be out of his rhythm looking for a reason to fade him. But I didn't want to fade him against Serbia because he'd had 24 points earlier this summer against Serbia. Well, he did even better with 36 points. Uh, never letting looking to bet against a superstar like Curry, but he's probably priced to perfection now in the... Um, player prop markets. In fact, he's at 14 and a half to the over. Uh, James is 15 and a half. Durant, 14 and a half to the under. Um, I'd probably lean Durant of those big three there. Um, Durant would be my preference coming off the bench as um, he's probably due for a breakout game. He's definitely capable of putting up 20 or more as we've seen him do in many Olympics over the years. But let's point out the matchup here. France does not have the guard play that the U.S. has. What they have is size down low, uh, especially with Wemba Yamba. What's insane is that France pulled the upset over Germany as a five and a half point dog, despite the fact Wimby was just four for 17 shooting from the field. Four for 17, and France was only six for 27 from three point range, and they still pulled the upset. That could actually be bad news for the U.S. because the U.S., yes, Serbia hit 15 threes in the first three quarters, but Serbia didn't hit a three in the fourth quarter. That's why the only reason the U.S. won that game. The U.S. actually finished with a plus three edge, 16 to 15 from three-point range, and they still only won by four. So there are some concerns. Obviously, Jokic was a big man there. Wimba Yama's a big man for France. So, yes, the U.S. guards have to play a lot better. I think the U.S. will play better. A guy like Durant that can hit threes is going to probably be involved. Wouldn't want to fade Curry, even though he's priced to perfection. I think Devin Booker overs make sense. He got a lot of minutes against Serbia. They also like his defense, so he'll probably be in the lineup a good amount of time. I'm looking for some of the guards to have a big game here because it will be hard to score down low against Wimba Yamba. And you notice I didn't mention the other big man, Gobert, because who knows if he's going to play. 
You guys who watched my NBA playoff videos earlier this spring, I did every game for every playoff game during the NBA playoffs right here on Wager Talk TV. You'll remember Gobert missed the game at Denver against Jokic, actually, when his child, his child was being born. Very French thing to do, but I understand. But the point was they played well without him. And I've said for several seasons now, Gobert is one of the most overrated all-stars in the NBA. And we're seeing it once again. He played three minutes in the upset win over Canada. He saw about only, I believe, five minutes against Germany on Thursday. And France won both of those games outright as eight-point and five-and-a-half-point underdogs. Um, so I'm not sure Gobert is going to play. He claims he has a finger injury, re- re-aggravated the finger injury. But the head coach said it's based on matchups. So who knows what's going on. But once again, Gobert vastly overrated. We're seeing it here as a back-to-back upset wins. In fact, if Gobert plays more, I think that helps Team USA. So I'm not going to rely on him down low. But they do have a lot of size still with Wambiyama. The team, you know, they got some big guys that have NBA experience. But the guard play is a lot weaker. So I think that will be the difference in this game. I like Team USA first half and full game. And also I like the guards of maybe Booker. Look for him on some player props over. I'm seeing him at 9.5 to the under. So over the 9, nine and a half. Drew Holiday, five and a half points. I think that's very manageable. I mentioned him in the last game, and um, obviously he did not have a lot of points. Only had three points, only two shot attempts, but he played 20 minutes, and they're going to have him out there more again, I think, once again. Derek White only got seven minutes. So I think Booker and Holiday, just based on minutes play, had the potential to score some, especially against a team that does not have great guards in France. And uh, one other guy I'll mention is uh, obviously Embiid played a lot of minutes, 27 minutes, 19 points. But Anthony Davis only played 10 minutes, only had four points, only took one shot attempt. I think Davis will play more in this game. And I think also they're going to have him defensively on Wimba Yamba more than Embiid. I think Davis is a better matchup defensively. So if he plays more minutes, he will have more offensive chances. Now, I'm not seeing Anthony Davis props in a lot of the books right now, so keep an eye out. But if you can find some Anthony Davis over props, my gut feeling is he will play more minutes defensively, and that'll help him score more on the offensive end as well. Hey, what are your thoughts on this game on the side, on the player props? Hey, what about the total? I gave you the under in the semifinal game as my top free play here on Thursday. It got in there, just got in there. What was the uh, the total there? 186, stayed under the 187, 188, wherever it closed. Actually closed as high as 189. We're now seeing a lower total for this game. Opened 177.5. Wager Talk Live Odd Screen already has the total down to 175.5 as we head into Friday evening. Um, but I do like the under here. The early sharp money's on the under. I would agree with the under. It's an elimination game. It's a championship game. And I always lean under in focus spots in basketball. We did that in the NBA playoffs. We talk about our game sixes and sevens especially are much lower scoring. Well, this is basically a game seven. Um, and I do expect more defensive intensity. France has good size down low, as I mentioned, but their guard play is lacking. I think that helps the under as well. And uh, Team USA, they've put up some points in other games. Uh, struggled a bit until the fourth quarter against Serbia. Keep in mind, uh, they had 23 points or less in each of the first three quarters until that break out of the fourth quarter. So I think the under makes sense here. Under 175 and a half. Also like Team USA first half full game, under 175 and a half and some of those Player props are worth sprinkling as well. Hey, look, these are all leans. No official strong best bets here. Team USA has been very random, but the one zigzag pattern that's held up is after a bad showing, they come out strong in the next game. Now, the one X factor, of course, is this game's in Paris, and Paris is uh, France, and France is the home dog here, and we saw that energy carry them back-to-back upsets over both Canada and Germany. But teams off back-to-back upsets in all sports, football, basketball, any way you cut it, are usually a play against. So I think that's another reason that the uh, clock strikes midnight. And France gets silver. Look, they're going to be very happy with silver. In fact, every team in this tournament other than Team USA would be happy with silver because the USA was a huge favorite coming in. So France is happy to be here. Yes, maybe that energy gets the crowd. Maybe they get behind them early on. But I think the USA comes out strong after their big finish against Serbia. I like them first half, but I also like them full game on Saturday, 3.30 Eastern Saturday afternoon on NBC National TV. Hey, comment below. Let me know your thoughts on this game, USA-France. I think we know who's going to get the gold medal. It's most likely Team USA. By the way, the money line on this game is uh, pretty hefty here. As a 16-point favorite, not a surprise that Team USA is laying a solid number. They're about minus 1,500, minus 1,600 uh, to win outright. France at 9-1, to one, big underdog price. What's crazy is when the Olympics began, I saw France as low as 7 or 8-1 to one to win the whole thing. Now in the finals, they're 9-1. to one. Just shows, once again, why playing those futures is rarely a good option. You're better off just doing a money line parlay on each game. But what are your thoughts on the game itself? Side, totals, player props. What are you looking at? Comment below. I read all the comments and I reply back. Throw some analysis in as well. Let's win and learn and earn together here on Wager Talk TV. Hey, thumbs up, like. 
finding the video useful. And don't forget, click subscribe if you haven't already done so. Over 160,000 subscribers. I can't be wrong. I think we're up to 170. I've lost count. It keeps growing on a daily basis as we head into football. And football is less than a month away. So click the bell as well so you know when my NFL Fade the Public video, my college football weekly top 25, my daily free play baseball videos along the way are up. When you click that bell, when you subscribe, click the bell for instant alerts so you never miss out here on some great free content. And don't forget, this weekend is your last chance to get the rest of August for free. Speaking of free content, how about every best bet I'll release for the month of August for free from here on out the next three plus weeks? Well, you can do so, but you have to do it before Sunday night. So why wait? Get on board now, get the full week, and in fact, the rest of August for free when you sign up for the two-month combo, September-October All-Sports Combo. Why wouldn't you want to? You're going to get college football, pro football, the rest of baseball into the World Series, and even the start of the NBA in October. All two months, and you get the rest of August for free. It's a September-October combo, no promo code needed, and you're getting the rest of August for free when you sign up this weekend on my page right now, along with daily free plays. Check out those free baseball plays each and every day on my page. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Get there quicker. Shortcut wt.buzz slash sm. Follow me on X on Twitter, at Steve Merrill, two R's, one L, at Steve Merrill on X. And stay tuned here to Wager Talk TV for some more great free content coming up next.